Dylan Hartley will be able to have a good time now and relax. He's had to hang up his boots. He didn't want to. He's had to retire after a brilliant, brilliant career, not just with the Northampton Saints, but with England, of course. And, well, that's what the Twitter world was talking about. A legend, a leader, a saint. Today, one of our all-time greats hangs up his boots. Dylan Hartley, it's been a privilege. And Will Carling, the great Will Carling, hope you're watching Will, says sorry to hear of Dylan Hartley's retirement from rugby due to his knee injury. A tough competitor, a great servant to England, often wrongly judged by fans and media. Good guy, good fun, bloody good captain, says Will Carling. Um, let's talk about Dylan. Your thoughts on him, his career? Yeah, listen, he, you know, he he has polarised opinion with the bands and things like that at times, but he's been a phenomenal competitor. You don't get 97 caps by fluke. You, know, you don't get 97 caps by being a bad player. Um, he's obviously led England uh, exceptionally well for the first part of Eddie Jones' tenure. Um, he has had discipline issues, but he's been a, a real worry. He played on the edge, a real competitor to play against, tough guy. Um, and it's a shame to see um, you know, his career come to an end as uh, earlier as it, th than he thought. Yeah, and a, a one-club man. You know, he's uh, in his first stint as captain. I think he, he lifted Northampton to the Premiership title. You know, two Challenge Cups and, a, and an Anglo-Welsh Cup. Um, you know, won a Grand Slam with England, and you know that they're hard things to do. Uh, and probably captain England in terms of their their test consecutive test, you know, victories. I guess the the bittersweet you know pill for him will be the bands. Maybe you look back on the, the you know didn't get on a Lions tour when he probably should have done because of a ban. Um, and and ultimately that last chapter, the Rugby World Cup. You know, he was hopefully going to finish that and, and maybe lead England into that World Cup final. And and unfortunately wasn't able to do that. But when you look back on it, it's been quite some journey for him. How will he be feeling this week? What's it like when you have to retire and you have to hang up the boots and say goodbye to it all? I think it, it, it depends. It, was he prepared for it? Has he got everything else in place education-wise? Has he got something else to move into that will drive his passion and his emotions? And that's the key thing, really. When you get cut short and you pretty much know when it's your time, it's either by injury or you basically come to the end of the road, you get too old. If, if you're not... If you're not prepared to put the same amount of energy into the next part of your life or you believe that you're entitled in any way in the next part of your life, you are going to struggle. If you work as hard as you work to get to where you got to, you've got a really good chance of being as successful, if not more successful. I'd like to think after my, I'm actually more successful after my rugby career. I never ever want to die on my, be on my deathbed and be defined as a rugby player. you weren't player. very successful, did you? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the main part. But, you know, since then I've had different goals, different drives, uh, you know, great family. And most of the players finish with great families. And I think you have to lean on that a little bit, lean on it to get you through the next, the hardest bit I always thought was the first nine to 18 months. You get through that, you refocus yourself and you go again and then you drive yourself to the next thing, whatever it be. It could be fiscal, it could be energy, it could be charity, it could be family, but have a drive and get going towards it. Uh, I mean, Lawrence, you got to retire on your own terms, as far as I remember. I was, I was actually at Shane Burns Stag uh, watching you play in that final. Uh, well, I don't know when the, Tigers, when the when the when the, yeah, when the subs played. Uh, you playing that? Yeah, clapped him <laughs> off. <laughs> I think when the substitution board comes up earlier and earlier, you know your time is, is done. But uh, no, listen, it, it is tough. He's been fighting a knee injury. It's not the way he would have wanted to go out. But when he reflects on the journey that he's had. It's been an incredible journey. You know, who gets the captain England? Who gets to win, you know, grand slams and trophies and that type of thing? So, uh, you know, listen, we w we wish him well. Uh, which one of your retirements hurt the most? <laughs> hurt? Um, well, the, the first one probably because I couldn't train anymore. But uh, no, I, I, some people say you play for too long. Um, there's real unfortunate players out there that have had career ending injuries. I was 36. Uh, and I was sort of hanging on in there and I came out of retirement again because Dean Richards gave me a call and Newcastle needed an old 10 to kick the goals and that was about it. But you know, <laughs> And they got <laughs> so, a good burger out there. <laughs> Fish and chips before a game are great. Just to, uh, But yeah, listen, you know, you have to be prepared for it. The hard ones are the guys that 25, Sam Jones at Wasps, the, the greatest thing in his career happened to him, getting picked for England, goes to England training under Eddie Jones, 3v1 wrestling, snaps his leg, his career, he's then fighting to get fit, ends up retiring 18 months later. They're the hard ones. The ones when you're old guys like us who have had a, a long career and then you're just too old and you've got a few niggles, of course you have, you've prepared yourself a bit better. So the, the, the thoughts go, and I'm sure Dylan Hartley would have been well prepared knowing that this knee injury hasn't been out there in the press as serious as it was. He'd have known himself, would he have been able to come back? And, and that's a tough thing. Uh, you're not alone on Sam Jones. Neil Arland, uh, Arnold, I should say, so sad for the premature retirement. He definitely had a promising future. He really did. Um, Tom Croft as well comes from Leeshan Wade. Tom Croft could have been special without all his injuries. Arguably not a premature end, but upset due to not seeing him play a 
at his full potential consistently towards the end because he had so many small injuries. Um, Matt Tate, of course, oh, Matt had a good, had a yeah. good career. Matt well, Tate, Rob, Rob, Rob Horn, Tom Reese. Yeah, look, yeah. Don't, don't feel sorry for these guys that have had the opportunity and then can go on and do something else with their life. Actually, have more of a thought for the likes of Matt Hampson, exactly. Henry Fraser, Rob, yeah. Rob Horn, those guys that have now got a different type of battle, a different type of fight for the rest of their lives. The rest of the lads who finished because they had a sore knee, you know, don't feel too bad for them. They got a great opportunity. They got the chance to play on the big stage, and now they've got to do something else. If you keep thinking about the past, you keep looking in your locker at the shirts and the medals you've won, you won't do anything with the rest of your life. Um, there's a book you should all read. You should all read from Richie Sadler, who was a, a footballer, played for Millwall in Ireland and had to retire because of a hip injury, and it, it affected him really, really badly. His book is very revealing. He talks about turning to drink and drugs and depression and just terrible, dark, dark thoughts. Uh, as you said, Oz, he found something which, which he had to do, but it was giving up that thing. As a kid, he was the star player in the team. He's always the star player, star player, and that, that just comes to an end. And his identity was lost. And I think a lot of players feel that, and I'm just looking at people talking about Stephen Fair Harris, of course, had to retire early as well. You know, that's a difficult thing for a player to deal with. It might be, just, it might be a physical injury, it might be a mental injury that you have to deal with. Yeah, and it's, you know, as a, as a rugby player, you're kind of an alpha male, aren't you? You try and portray that image of we're big, tough guys, but we're actually not. Now, you know... Look, I am. But yeah, of course you are, but you're very short as well, so that's your yeah. problem as well. But <laughs> I'm not when, big, not tough. <laughs> but, yeah. but when you look at it, Austin's actually right. The first sort of 18 months are the toughest thing to go through, but you do have to find another drive, and you rely on your family, and you rely on your friends around you. But ultimately, you've got to have that drive yourself to be successful at a second time and to, to be a professional rugby player to make the top of your sport you've been so driven to get achieve goals and even you know players that perhaps didn't get as far as they would have wanted they've still trained hard to get to where they got to well, it's, it's you've the then got to find that second drive to, to do it again so it's the ultimate team sport you're part of a band of brothers you know you've been together in that you've had everything you know laid out for you and then suddenly you've got a blank sheet of paper you've got to work it all out yourself so it will take time for any player who retires just to find out what they you know, decompress you don't get a handbook to say that's how you deal with you know post retirement you know it's it's about decompressing, but I'm sure Dylan and others will find things that really challenge them moving forward. And that's why a lot of players move into media. They, they like it. They think it's similar to playing. You know, it's not the, easy. The food. It's not as easy no. as some of us make it look. No. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot of people that try and fail, and it, yeah. it takes perseverance and, and talent more than anything else. Yeah. So. And makeup. And Thank a lot of makeup. Goodness. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and being humble. <laughs> and being humble. <laughs> and being prepared to work with people you don't really want to work with. <laughs> I know. Is that happening now? Is that happening right now? <laughs> um, 